Sorry, customer client, uh, calling <clears throat> calling me. Anyway, I, I would say this is probably about as stretchy as a uh, as a three mil wetsuit. Um, maybe not quite as stretchy, um, but it's definitely stretchier than a uh, than a bare SB. Um, I wish that I could put this down and show you uh, with two hands. I will at some point. Um, yeah, uh, pulling on it and stuff, um, it is really stretchy. Yeah, I would say it's about the same amount of stretch as a 3 mil. It's more stretchy than a bare SB. Um, historically speaking, um, historically speaking, a, a neoprene suit has uh, a lot of buoyancy built into it, a lot of inherent buoyancy. And uh, I don't think that I would get that, that, that buoyancy out of the suit, uh, which would be a great thing. And the reason is because of its um, <clears throat> what they call hyper compressed, not just compressed, but hyper compressed uh, neoprene. Um, now, just as an example, uh, DUI sent me a couple of samples of their uh, CF200 material, which is most like this, and their CLX450 material, uh, which is most like like a really heavy duty version of a bare SB, uh, except that it doesn't stretch. Okay, so let me see if I can kind of prop this up and get any sort of, no, oh, there's no way. Okay, um, no stretch in this whatsoever. This is your typical trilaminate material, um, very thin, uh, very little inherent buoyancy, <clears throat> if at all, and uh, rock hard. Um, here is your CF200 material, stretchy. Um, this starts as a 3 mil. They compress it in a uh, hyperbaric chamber uh, on site and uh, crush it. So it's actually what they call a crushed neoprene. Uh, really think a lot of this material, you can see a little square that I cut out right there. And I threw a piece of this stuff into a glass of uh, water, tap water, fresh water, and uh, found that this material here sank. It didn't float at all. So it actually has a negative uh, buoyancy in this material. So I think a lot of this material, um, not only is there no buoyancy, but you get all the stretch and the ruggedness of uh, CF200 material. Here are the CLX450. Uh, this material, I actually cut a little square out there too. Dropping in the same glass of water, this material actually floated. And I have a picture earlier on this thread. <clears throat> um, I'm hoping that this bare material is similar to this uh, CF200 material. It seems like it is. It's very durable. It's very, mm, I don't know, compact, compressed. It doesn't seem to be any, uh, let me double this over so that I can compare. Um, it doesn't seem to be much sponginess to it at all. I feel the edge here. Yeah, they seem really, really, really similar. Um, dare I say that the bear might actually have less sponginess in it. Anyway, it would be an amazing thing for this suit to actually be negatively buoyant um, because then it would be, uh, there would be no advantage to any other material. I mean, other than, uh, you know, dry weight sitting in the back of the truck, uh, which, you know, pointless. I don't see any point to that. I'm not traveling with it ever. No extending torso, which makes sense to me because the suit stretches. Um, <clears throat> all side tech valves, so you're gonna see the same valving system that you do on, say, a Santee suit. Um, I'm pretty impressed. I like it a lot. And I got a lot of confidence that this thing is gonna be, uh, uh, you know, a really nice diving suit. Um, I can tell you this, remember the, the, uh, the abrasive patches on here? that are here to uh, prevent uh, abrasion. You know, this is, this is your hyper-compressed neoprene. They say it's two millimeters. Um, I don't know if it started as two millimeters before they compressed it or if it started as something thicker and they compressed it to two millimeters. I don't know how they're making their measurement. Their measurement. Um, but anyway, this, uh, this abrasive pad, which uh, feels very much like Kevlar, um, this stretches as much as this does, which I'm really shocked about. I had a feeling that this, Material would not stretch, uh, as, you know that you know just like a standard Kevlar pad, you would not get any stretch at all. And that is not true. This definitely stretches, so uh, I'm not without stretch 
on uh, the underside of the arms and the forearms and the back sides of the arms. I have a Dalmatian, you can actually see his uh, hair. Um, oval cuffs, those things are uh, easy to change out. I've already addressed the, uh, the addition of the uh, rubber uh, piece here. Um, that's a high wear area for us, so I'm not sure if that's gonna... Uh, I think that'll actually do better. Um, and if it doesn't, it appears that I can change it out. Not that I ever would. Anyway, uh, bottle cuffs. This is what SciTech offers. This is what Bear offers from SciTech. They do not offer the, uh, you know, cuttable um, cone cuffs. Um, it doesn't bother me. I don't really care either way. <clears throat> In fact, uh, the only the only thing that's kind of weird about these bottle shaped uh, cuffs is that you actually have a size. You know, I think it's three sizes. I think it's small, medium, and large. Or maybe it's four, small, medium, large, and extra large. I, I don't remember. Um, I think I got the extra large, come to think of it. Anyway, uh, you just measure your wrist and, hand, and send it to them, and they send you the appropriate size. So you don't trim these. These are already the correct size. Um, they are a little stiffer to get on and off because of the amount of seal that you have against your wrists. But I think they seal better than uh, the adjustable cone style that you would see in a lot. So um, I don't really care either way. They both work and I've had good luck with both of them. Um, standard latex. Uh, I did not do the uh, silicone. Uh, some people prefer the silicone, but it's usually those with a latex allergy. Uh, the latex appears to be more mm, rugged, I guess I should just say. The silicones tend to be more fragile. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the neck seal is, uh, is, uh, customizable, though. It's, <laughs> I have a dog barking in the background. Anyway, um, yeah, this is, uh, you, you cut along the edges here. And I do this for every dry suit that I've had. So, so, so far, so good. Uh, let's check the zipper. The zipper is new, um, <clears throat> this year on this dry suit. Um, it is not the tie zip or the T zip. Uh, it's spelled T I Z I P. Um, people have called it a T zip or a tie zip. This is the YKK plastic zip, uh, which actually has <clears throat> a better reputation than the than the tie zips or the T I zips. Although the T I zips were the originator, you know, they're the ones who came up with the idea of a waterproof plastic zipper. Um, I'm really impressed. Uh, by the waterproof plastic zipper. I've had no problems with the tie zips or the T zips, whatever you want to call it, but this is supposed to be even more durable. So we will see. Uh, a couple things I like about it a lot is the flexibility. Look at that. You know, I can just, I mean, it's just like any other plastic zipper except that it's waterproof. Um, you lubricate the very end of it. I assume that it's the same here. It comes with a little bottle of lube. Um, but uh, I assume that it's the same as the, as the tie zips. Um, yeah, real similar. You have a piece that you pull. There is a dock where the zipper parks in the dock, and that actually has to be docked. You have to make sure that that is docked. Um, but you put a little bit of lube in the dock itself, and other than that, there's no lubricant ever needed on the zipper. So the days of spreading wax uh, every other dive is gone, and that's a huge thing. There's no protective... Um, zipper over this zipper, which I actually prefer, um, even though there's a lot of stuff in the water. Um, when I get out, I just want to be able to kind of run the hose down here and rinse it all out and then open it, rather than having to open two zippers and it be more complicated, especially if one of them is a brass zipper. Um, DUI, uh, obviously you've read the thread up to this point. DUI said that uh, the, the brass zippers were considerably more durable and that they would never do a plastic zip on a CF200, um, which was a real disappointment to me. But when I asked them about it, uh, they said that the brass zippers definitely last longer, um, although I have not had that be the case. I have had the plastic zippers last longer, and the reason is <clears throat> is because they're not so hard to pull, uh, and they don't uh, corrode, and they don't require lubricant. Um, <clears throat> so these tend to last longer. Um, I saw a video one time of what DUI was doing and uh, it appeared to me like they had 
two zippers on a machine and they were zip, 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 you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One was plastic and one was brass and the plastic failed before the brass did, um, you know, as they were zipping it fast back and forth. And I have a suspicion that uh, if you zipped this fast up and down many times an hour, um, you could get the zipper to heat up and the heat would be detrimental to the plastic, whereas the heat would not be detrimental to brass. Uh, actually, it would take more heat to be detrimental to brass. And so therefore, the assumption is, is that the brass lasts longer. But in terms of being able to um, <clears throat> zip up and down on the site, um, I have found these not only to be equivalent but superior to brass zippers. But uh, but I'm I'm not the uh, I'm not the only one that feels that way, and uh, there are other people of other opinions. So, uh, and those people who 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 are in the know, like DUI, who's been doing this since you know like two generations, really two, yeah, I think two generations. Like what's that, fifty years? Anyway, um, yeah, pretty impressed. Um, I love the leg pockets. Uh, I liked the SB's leg pockets. Uh, the, there was an internal pocket only on the left thigh. Um, it was internal completely, uh, sort of a bizarre thing, um, but uh, very unique to the SB, but I liked it uh, a lot. Um, I liked its streamlinedness. This is not going to be nearly as streamlined, obviously, but uh, yeah, I have a lot more room in this. Uh, this is a typical external pocket. This is made of neoprene. Uh, it matches this neoprene. It feels like it's also hyper-compressed neoprene. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I would have to... Uh... Anyway, I'm going to have to dive it, find out how it weights out. Um, here are your knee pads. They appear to be the same material. Nope, maybe not. No, they're not the same material. This is like a rubberized material. Um... I don't know if this is Kevlar or what, but it's, it's almost it's thicker, like a rubberized material. That has no stretch to it, I'm pretty sure. No, no appreciable stretch at all. Um, this is almost like a like a three millimeter booty, like the bottom of a three millimeter booty. It's pretty thick. I would probably say it's uh, a mil or two thick, rubberized knee pad. It's pretty tough. Um, the same boots that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that SciTech makes these. Um, these are the same boots that Santee has. Same boots as what's on the SB. Um, the instep here uh, on the Santees is like, I don't know, ribbed, a little bit different. Uh, but they are neoprene. Very stretchable, very stretchy, good sole. Same size as what was in the SB for me. Yeah, the only thing that's kind of weird is this... Uh, these, uh, this butt pad, the guy asked me if I wanted a butt pad, and I was like, well, I sit on a dock often with nails and boards sticking up, so he said, yeah, let's do the butt pad. <laughs> I have two butt cheeks. A little bit odd looking, but like I said, uh, I think that they'd actually be lower on the leg than that, and maybe even kind of up underneath, so you might not notice it at all. I don't know, because right now it kind of looks sort of funny. Anyway, um, not too worried about it. I'm going to try it out. I love the look, uh, very impressed with it. I will check out um, the uh, paperwork and such here. Um, looks like a pretty doggone nice suit. I'm gonna <clears throat> probably wear a, um, uh, probably wear a, a full length ar Under Armour um, leggings and, and uh, long sleeve t-shirt, snug fitting, and I will put this on and go dive in my pool. I have a pool in the backyard, so I'll go dive in my pool and check that out and see what's um, how I like it, whether or not it's uh, worth anything. All right, so I've just uh, clipped off some of the, um, what do you call it, it's, uh, paperwork and stuff. Um, XCS2, TechDry, ProDry, um, the difference between a tech dry and a pro dry is a tech dry is a front entry. Pro dry is the back entry. Uh, we always do front entry because sometimes we solo dive, um, which of course is weird, but, uh, you need to be able to get in and out of your own suit. So, uh, anyway, they say, uh, 
I guess you can pause this and read it if you want. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to read it. Here's the other part. Uh, two millimeter hyper compressed full stretch neoprene minimizes changes in buoyancy and thermal protection at depths. Um, no stitch technology. Your diamond tough nylon laminate on the exterior. That diamond tough, they're just talking about the uh, the nylon uh, exterior of the of the dry suit. Um, it is like a wetsuit material. Maybe yeah, maybe a little bit thicker. I don't know. It is stretchy, and it's uh, but it's tough stuff. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Inner fabric. We're gonna go inside of it here in a second. Ti zip. Uh, tie zip, master seal, main entry zipper, um, protect, shoulder, underarm, and elbow protection. That's the stretchy stuff. And K pads, knee protection, are not stretchy, but they are thick and tough. So, yeah, we're going to go inside of it now. All right, those of you who are familiar with uh, tie zips know that there's a little um, tie zip handle. And that this is not it. And that's because this is not a tie zip master seal zipper. Um, this is the YKK plastic zipper, um, which, like I said, has recently gotten a better reputation. Um, not that there was anything wrong with the tie zips, in my opinion, but people say that these are tougher. Um, you can tell you have a, there's your pull. So you pull from one end and open the other. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, I may even be able to do this. Keep in mind, there's a brand new suit. so. Um, I may even be able to do this with one hand. Um, nope. I'll open it here. 